should be good. Because we have zero people watching, in case you want to. Should I wear a hat yeah. backwards like you guys? I mean, I feel like it's... It's all those trucker hats? Um, Mine is not a trucker hat, but I can grab a trucker hat, because what is life without seven hats in my living room? Yeah. <laughs> Mine <laughs> is just, I haven't gotten a haircut in, like, two months. I mean... I don't actually want to wear a hat. Same. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, same I wish we started doing these like a couple weeks ago. My hair was insane. I need pictures, Jason. I really want to like have seen your hair. Um, like you know how it flies out the back of your hat? Yeah. Mine wasn't quite that much, but it was like at least an inch outside That's the back awesome. of my hat. Okay. I respect I it. Well, <laughs> hell yeah, lax bro, Jason. <laughs> Is that wine? Are you drinking wine? Oh my god, no! I don't drink wine. Oh. No, it's it's a, it's a stout, and the more I drink it, the more I hate it. Ooh, should I get some beer? I'm about to go and get a different beer, because I can't drink that. Oh, my God. Wait, are we about to start? Uh, I'm pulling up the thing to tweet it out, but I, <laughs> I just wanted to unmute myself, because I don't want to like have this playing in the background like I did last time, learning. But I'm drinking whiskey, so. All right, so I should definitely go get a beer. Yeah, All right, I'm I'm gonna go back. All right let's, let's break, because i got to pour this shit out. We we are we are on a break to the zero people watching. Alcohol run. I really wish I could hear out of my left earphone. Now we're talking. Love it. Love that sound. <laughs> Jason, what are we drinking? Coors. <laughs> hero. Absolute hero. <laughs> you got to love it, right? That's, that's my go to. It. If I drink like a light beer, like that's what I drink. I love Coors. Agreed. When the mountains are blue, Jason is happy. Hey. Do we have any listeners? How do we check that? Can we check on this page? No, I don't think so. Oh, this game started. Who do you guys want to win? <laughs> Um, Cruz Azul. Cruz Azul. Big Cruz Azul guy. <laughs> Is Barcelona playing? Uh, I've heard. I've heard of Real Madrid. Do they? Do they still play soccer? <laughs> All right, that I had the audio playing up on my end, just while I had me muted, and that was the most annoying thing hearing us just repeat <laughs> what you guys repeat like back and forth oh, oh you my heard God. us oh i see <clears throat> but, uh, but as it turns out we're annoying jason <laughs> yeah. i mean i've gotten that one too many times at this point yeah yeah all right four minutes up of being live let's uh let's start the actual things that sound good i'm gonna retweet it this. all right that's mm. three do that. that's two <laughs>
MLS Aces episode 168. This is your host, Tom Sweezy, and this is the 2020 Year End Review podcast, our last podcast for this uh, fantastic year 2020 has been for everybody, right? Um, but joined with me are the uh, the normal co-hosts of the MLS Aces podcast. Let's go to the man in the forward Madison jersey, Sam Nelson. Hey. Sam, how are you? Doing good. Doing good. Glad to be here. I'm sorry. I had to rock out during the intro. I just love that. Love that song. Gets you know me pumped what? up. It gets me pumped up. It's we, you know, I don't I feel like we haven't said it in a little bit, so I'll just throw it out there. You know, I gotta thank Alexi Lyles for it, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. we also gotta thank Jason Vivang for being on the podcast once again. Jason, how are you? I'm doing well. Yeah. Um yeah. Year end review. It's kind of wild, right? It's another yeah. year. It's wild yeah. that you know but- this year's over. Well, I mean, we got one more big game left of the year. And, you know, just to give everyone listening or watching uh, a little insight into when we're recording, we are watching LAFC Tigris live right now while recording. So if we get any reactions, that's why. But I feel like um, that one time uh, you and I recorded an episode during a U.S. men's team. I don't remember like, how well that went, really. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> watching my, I definitely started screaming about some goal like two weeks ago. I feel like we just ended up watching it and <laughs> talking. And just barely talking. I mean, that probably it's, that sounds like it, you know. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to get into a little bit of the, you know, just kind of show notes that I have to say. Then we'll get started talking with the year in review and everything to wrap up uh, 2020 in MLS, U.S. soccer and everything like that. Um, but we are the MLS Aces podcast. If you guys want to learn a, bit, a little bit more about us, you can go over to MLSAces.com, learn about us, the other podcast we have within um, our circle. Uh, the three of us, we have our bios on there and also some blogs and everything like that. If you guys want to follow us on social media, you can follow us on Twitter at MLS Aces, at Jason Vivang, and at um, Uncle Sam, Uncle underscore Sam XIII. You know, I fucked it up on the last one. Day, one day I'm going to change that. <laughs> one day I'm going to really just fix that. Make if it you guys are but Don't on- tell Tom so he still gets it wrong. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> if you guys are watching on Twitch live or um, afterwards, or if you're watching on YouTube afterwards, then you'll see um, all the Twitters kind of being cycled through throughout the show. Um, if you guys want to follow us on Instagram, MLS underscore aces, and uh, you guys can also support us at patreon.com slash MLS aces. Um, so like I said, this is the year end review. We are also watching the CONCACAF Champions League final while we're recording. So there is a lot going on. But I'm very, very happy to kind of wrap this up with you guys and uh, wrap this up for the listener listeners as well. Uh, but we got to talk about, I guess, the big thing that we talked about all, all last podcast. And that's MLS Cup. Congratulations. Yeah, let's talk about it. Congratulations to the Columbus crew. Uh, the Columbus crew are your 2020 <laughs> MLS Cup champions. Jason, I'm going to you first. You're the only one that called this right. Please. I mean, Honestly, like, I really wish I had those sound bites from last week or what, a week and a half ago because the amount of shit you yeah. guys gave me after picking <laughs> yeah. the crew <laughs> was ridiculous. And then they, they didn't just win. Let me be clear. They did not just win that game. Seattle rolled over and died on the field. It was, like, <laughs> it was like the crew were playing sixth graders. My AYSO team, when I was growing up, <laughs> was better than Seattle that day. So, yeah. Wow. You heard it here first, folks. Wow. <laughs> Hey, I mean, you know I'm clipping the hell out of that, right? And that oh, was – yeah, Seattle's going to hate me. That's fine. You know what? If I have to make some enemies, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Out of, out of every city, shouldn't Seattle be the one that does hate you? Oh, true. Portland. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, this is also without Nagby, who yeah. did not and, play. And Santos. And Santos, yes. Yeah. So the two guys that I said were probably going to have to really step up in the midfield and, you know – that's where the battle would be won, weren't playing. So, you know, I'm not going to say I wasn't a little concerned going in, but holy shit, did the uh, Aiden Morris, he stepped up right in their place and dominated. And honestly, like, that was the difference maker, I think. It was that midfield. Obviously, Seattle really couldn't get much going. The crew just were better. No, I mean, 
you, you said a lot there that I kind of just want to back up your points because you deserve you deserve this, Jason. <laughs> you, you completely deserve to rub this in our faces. Yep, that's true. So in you saying Seattle just rolling over and dying, this is the first um, club, the Columbus Crew, the first club to win any MLS Cup by three or more goals. So 100% right there that Seattle just looked like nothing. That was um, the worst performance in a final. Is what you're yes, saying. exactly. Yeah. And it was also, bad. Also, to your point on Aiden Morris, replacing Darlington Nagby did a fantastic job of doing it, had an assist. I think he became the youngest player to ever record an assist in an MLS Cup. Wasn't he, was he the youngest player. player? Start. Yeah, That's what exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, obviously, if he did anything, <laughs> scored or recorded. Yeah, so it had to have been the youngest. But, you know. Mm, math. <laughs> he, he was great. Aiden Morris yeah. was great, and the crew just looked great overall. I mean, Sam, um, anything you want to add to the Columbus Crew's victory? No, I was I was wrong. And, and honestly, I've, I've now watched <laughs> MLS Cup 2020 twice. And, I mean, there's just no doubt, like, in my mind that Seattle just showed up, uh, thought they were going to roll over Columbus. I don't really know why they showed up the way they did. And Columbus deserves every all the credit. Seattle deserves nothing, no pity, anything. Like, they sucked. Columbus looked amazing. And it was, it was a fun game to watch. It really was. It was a neutral to be able to sit there and watch that game. I mean, 100%. So... I just want to give the credit to, I guess, someone we haven't talked about yet. We, we've mentioned Pedro Santos and Nagby who haven't played. We've mentioned Aiden Morris. How about the guy who won MLS Cup MVP and Lucas Zellerayan? First yeah. of all, found out this weekend that he's Armenian. That will part Armenian. That was cool to me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he's uh, Argentinian, but his dad was from Armenia or his dad's parents were from Armenia, something like that. It's a pretty right. cool move. Respect. Doesn't have a cap for the Argentinian national team. I'm pushing for him to play for <laughs> the Armenian national team, okay? Yeah, him and Henry Arian, let's go. Yeah. But, um, I really want to give credit to Lucas Elarion. He put on an absolute performance. The $8 million man, the record signing for the Columbus crew, coming in with a brace and an assist as well, because he had the assist on the Derek Etienne Jr. goal. So, Zellerayan was absolutely fantastic. And when you sign a big time DP, when you sign your record signing, you want him to step up in the biggest game of the season. This is exactly what you needed from, from your $8 million man and Zellerayan. Yeah. It kind of goes yeah. back to what I said about uh, new England when they were making their run about how they're signing these guys that need to perform in Zellerayan, like he needed to perform and he performed way better than honestly I feel like most people would have expected yeah and he also became the third player in MLS Cup history to score a brace in the final so him Landon Donovan and Aleko Eskandarian another Armenian we'll just go in with that uh that whole train it's a, there it's a good but- team yeah, it's a good we, we like, like Armenians over here. Yeah. Um, but it was just it's an awesome final. I don't want to harp on it too much. It's been, you know, it's been a little over a week since the final. Everyone's heard the conversations, but I just like want to throw out these things and give the crew their credit. Don't really want to touch on the sounders too much because they don't deserve to be talked about too much. Schmetzer messed up with the rot with the starting lineup. We all know that. Maybe some decisions that were made. Wasn't the best. We all know that. The big-time players didn't come out. That's fine. Nico Adero maybe having an injury. That's fine. Whatever. That's the Sounders talk you're getting in this podcast. Um, so, again, congratulations to the Columbus crew. Um, guys, you have anything else you want to say before we move on to anything else? Justice was served. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, I do want to say one thing. and. Um, yeah. We because we, we spent a lot of time talking about this last time, but Eli Room did start over Andrew Tarbell yeah. in the oh, final. Yeah. So like, we discussed that for a while. And I just wanted to say I thought it was an interesting choice, and they obviously, you know, kept a clean sheet in the MLS Cup. So like, there's that I guess decision made. But I just wanted to throw out that that was interesting. No, again, I, mean, I don't know if Tarbell wouldn't have kept kept a clean sheet. Yeah, the, the way either, Seattle played, but, it probably would have gone the same way. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, we did talk about that a lot, but. That that save Eloy Room had in like the somewhere in the 70th to 80th minute. I can't really think uh, what the time frame was. He did have oh, that big yeah. save that was Stefan Fry esque for an MLS Cup final. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you know. I, I was talking up Tarbell all last podcast. I'm back down on him. Let's go, Eloy. <laughs> 
So it's like, <laughs> you're talking them up on the interview. Every too. pod is just a different time on Tarbo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a different Tarbo opinion. Tarbo. Yo, if Andrew Tarbo wants to come on this podcast, if you come on this podcast, I love you. Like, that's it. I'm your fan for life. Oh, like, dude. Evan Loro, Sam, you mentioned, like, you kind of referred to it. I interviewed Evan Loro last week. So, if you guys didn't catch that, um, you can find that on any podcasting platform. Evan was a cool dude. Talk to him, talk to him before and after the pod as well. And I, I love him. I'm rooting for the best for him. I want him to go, you know, win and playing another USL final for the Rowdies and, and raise a trophy. Like, I want this for players. So, Andrew, if you want to come on the podcast, I will be your biggest supporter. That's it. We want more friends of the pod. <laughs> we <laughs> want many, many more friends of the pod. All right. Cool. That's, uh, let's move forward from MLS Cup because – MLS is the one weird league where as soon as the league ends, roster decisions are being made. There's drafts. There's so waivers. Nice. There's a fucking CONCACAF Champions League final a week later. You know, yeah, yeah. Everything going on. And I guess one of the biggest pieces of news that we didn't really touch on during the whole playoff run, and rightfully so, the playoffs were a lot of games going on, exciting games going on, was Greg Vanny stepping down as manager from Toronto FC. Um, if you guys don't know, Greg Vanny was a big reason why Toronto FC kind of had their large turnaround from being in one of the most embarrassing franchises in the league to now they're talked about as being, you know, top of the East every single year and MLS cup finalist every year and whatever it may be. So managed for six years with Toronto FC, won an MLS cup, won a supporter shield, won three Canadian championships. He brought trophies to this club. Um, there is the clear and obvious connection to Vanny being the LA Galaxy manager as a former LA Galaxy player. So before we get into anything else with the Galaxy talk, um, Sam, I just want to kind of talk to you about this first. What is Greg Manny kind of what is his legacy for Toronto FC? If that if if that's a good question, I guess. I mean, I think his legacy is relatively obvious. He he took a team from obscurity and made them, you know, almost um champions of CONCACAF they were they were a world beating team like really and, and they were very very good in those what that fuck, six years holy shit <laughs> <laughs> man I gotta read that oh well let's go from like like from, from like 2016 yeah. that year that they had everyone um shooting off like nobody's business to 2020 like that team was amazing and even when they lost Giovinco didn't skip a beat like picked up Pozuelo just kept going and, and his system worked and he also I really, really hate being the goalie guy <laughs> he had a different fucking keeper and they were always <laughs> so good <laughs> for no reason no reason he always found like a diamond in the rough keeper that was going to play well with his defense and um, you know, he's had Josie who's, who's just been getting consistently um, better as it's kind of gone in MLS and and Bradley is starting to make that decline, but he wasn't for a long time. And you know, coming back to America and getting both of both of them together on a team was big. And to have him there, um, it, it, the teams are good. And I think uh, no one in Toronto, I think, will will ever um, be upset about him being there. They'll be upset that he's leaving. Mm-hmm. His man was he a good coach? But <laughs> it, it seems to me like he has a plan in mind. That's why he left Toronto. Because otherwise, like, you know, that's a MLS uh, conference final team every year, really, at the rate they're going. Yeah. No, I mean, that's completely fair. I mean, I agree with you that I think he has a plan in mind moving forward. And I'm not sold on the Galaxy thing. But, uh, Jason, any thoughts on, I guess, Vanny, why he's leaving or, you know, kind of his legacy in Toronto, anything like that? So. This kind of caught me as a surprise. I don't know if mm-hmm. it caught you guys by surprise as well, but yeah. I mean, before I, I saw, you know, what you guys thought about possibly a Galaxy move for him, like him going over there, it made maybe a little bit more sense. Um, but when I first heard it, I was kind of like, wait, what? Like, why? My first thought was just why? Like, why is he stepping down? Like, like uh, Sam had said, like you have said, Tom, he was there for six years. He's got tons of accomplishments. Um, and they've just been like this perennial team that every single year they're in the playoffs. And once they're in the playoffs, that doesn't really matter what seed you are as we've seen this year, but Toronto just had this like ability to once they're in the playoffs kind of be feared. 
and they really did well in a lot of these playoffs over the six years. Um, obviously, <laughs> making MLS Cup a couple times uh, and winning one. But, yeah, for me, I was just kind of taken back, and I'm really curious to see where he goes next, whether that's in MLS with the Galaxy or, or a different team or, a, like, to Europe or something. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I feel like it's – we've also kind of, like, failed to talk about how important Greg Vanny was to Toronto and to CONCACAF alone on a club level because, you know, the closest we've ever seen an MLS team come to winning CONCACAF Champions League – outside of the result tonight, we'll see what happens, is that penalty shootout that Toronto had a few years ago. And Greg Vanny did that. I mean, like, obviously, look, he had Javinko. He had a, an unbelievable player, you know, starting 11. He had an unbelievable coaching staff. He had all of that. And I'm not going to take that away from them. But Greg Vanny was there from the beginning in 2014 and started it. You know, he was br- he was the guy bringing up Ayo and Akinola, from TFC two to the first team. He was the guy that got Josie and Michael to buy in bringing in, you know, Javinko from Juventus and, you know, kind of continuing that with Victor Vasquez afterwards. And we see, you know, um, Pozuelo now like Toronto FC is continuously a powerhouse. They're replacing their DPs. They're hitting on their DPs. They're, Focus, they're rotating in the TFC two players into the starting lineup, and Greg Vanny is a huge, huge part of that. So, I'm not sold on the LA Galaxy thing either, Jason. I'm going to go with you on that. I think Greg Vanny is potentially looking at Europe as the next steps, but there have been reports that you know he is in final closing stages to become the next manager of the LA Galaxy, but. Kind of talking about the CONCACAF Champions League a little bit. If you guys don't know, then LAFC eliminated Club America uh, the other night. And in a wild, wild game that we'll talk about in a little bit, Miguel Herrera um, was fired from Club America. And now there's the, the, the rumblings. So wild. Uh, maybe Miguel Herrera is the next manager for LA Galaxy. There's nothing confirmed, nothing from any serious report out there. But it does make sense. There was some fighting. There was some maybe some negative feelings towards LAFC players and coaching staff from Herrera and, and um, Club America's staff. I think that could be an awesome fit just from more of, I guess, like of a larger storyline fit um, or a conversation. But Jason, I'll go to you. Vanny or Herrera for LA Galaxy? What do you prefer? Let's go. 100% be- Vanny. I... So I like your idea of like the storyline is kind of funny um, and like the hate that that would bring for that rivalry. Um, But I just, when I read like Herrera's accomplishments, I'm just overall not that impressed. Like besides his time at club America where he he's won some trophies more recently prior to that, like he was not really winning that much in, for the amount of games he's managed and the amount of teams he's managed, I'm just not sold that going to the galaxy is going to be a massive boost for the galaxy. Whereas I think Vanny, he's already proven himself. um, Obviously with Toronto, like we just talked about, knows MLS far better. Um, And I don't know. I just, in my opinion, it, it seems like a, like a stretch higher and like if they got him maybe they have a better pipeline into that uh um south america and like latin america um areas but i don't i just feel like vanny's the better choice overall i'm not totally thrilled with herrera Mm. sam i mean i'm gonna go i want to hear your opinion are you more on the vanny train with jason or are you uh with me, I guess, and Miguel Herrera. <laughs> oh, is that where you're standing, Tom? Yeah, okay. I want right. um, I want the El Trafico to be fucking fantastic. That's 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 where I mean, I'm. That El would Trafico be great. A fantastico. <laughs> I want more walkie talkies oh. involved in El Trafico. That's oh, well, <laughs> we can we can probably play that game. <laughs> no, I um, I'm I'm pulling up J- uh, his his managerial stats because Jason said that he doesn't win very much, and, and when you look at it, like. Yeah, he's okay. I mean, yeah, um, he's okay. Like it, that was my well, no, takeaway. I'm, yeah, he's he's fine. Like his his best stint was with Club America, and then when he went and took over Mexico, 
He played in 36 games. He won 19, drew 10, and lost seven. He did like, get I mean, a gold cup in that in that run, though. I was saying they smoked us. So, <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Um, but no, I kind of, I actually, I agree with Jason. Like, I wanted to mess with you on stats, but I still agree with you, Jason. <laughs> um, he, Greg Vanny was the third longest tenured coach in MLS at the time that he quit. Yeah. Uh, he also turned down a contract extension, which meant this was coming. In my opinion, this that meant he this is coming. So he had a plan, and LA, you know, that's one of the top two markets in MLS in America in any sport is to either go to LA or go to New York. So, like a manager with his experience, with his um, accolades, coaching with a team with big pockets with a lot of room to work now because they have like no defense. They've got some decent talent up front, but they got to work. Uh, he knows how to find a diamond in the rough goalie, which God knows they need because David Bingham ain't shit anymore. Hey, um, you got baby Klinsman in that. Okay. Baby Klinsman ain't shit either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and I just feel like this was, from everything I, I can tell, like this is meant to be Greg Vanny's job. And maybe Herrera has them turning their heads. Um, it'd probably be really great to grab um, some of those uh, those youth prospects in, in Southern California right now with um, Herrera as the uh, as the LA Galaxy manager. Like They'd probably pick up some really good youth prospects that way. Yeah. But in the long run, he'd probably only be there for two or three years. So would it really matter? Probably not. So in my opinion... It's Greg Vanny's job, unless I'm told otherwise. So, Sam, you made a point that kind of made me think of a counterpoint, which is what a conversation on the podcast is. Just laid that one. Counterpoint. Bring it on. That's what I do. But when Atlanta United signed Tata Martino to be to be their head coach, they knew it was only for a short period, whether it was a season or two seasons, whatever it may be. But they made that signing to kind of set a uh, statement, a precedent, and kind of make that connection to South American players and show that they're like for real and serious. And that's what I feel like the Miguel Herrera signing for the LA Galaxy could be. Outside of, of I think, the drama, outside, I think, of the the hysterical nature that Herrera brings with, with him just alone, I really feel like it's like a move to say, we're here. We want to make connections to Mexican American players. We want to make connections to Mexican players and say, like, hey, like Miguel Herrera is here. He's coached the Mexican national team. He's coached Club America. He's coached uh, Tijuana. He's coached Monterrey, some of the biggest clubs in, in Mexico. Now he's taking on a new challenge in MLS and getting familiar with that talent as well. I don't know. I really feel like this could be a good fit. Yes, Vanny has the MLS experience. Yes, he knows the rules of constructing a roster. Yes, there's there's a lot of things that managers who come from outside of the league have to learn. But we've we've seen a lot of these South American coaches come. We're, we, we've seen it with Atlanta, Atlanta United's newest managerial signing. Up in San Jose, Tata going to Atlanta originally. We've seen this, and I could see this kind of following a trend here with another well-known big-name manager from South America heading to the Galaxy. And I also personally want it because I think it's going to be fucking amazing. I just don't be think he's good. I mean, he's won about half of his games. Look at Tata Mourinho. Like Tata Mourinho. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Tata Mart- notes, Martino is like that argument. Like he's just Tata's like on a different planet. In my but Tata opinion. wasn't that good with with, with the Argentinian in Barcelona. Team. Yeah, but he got he got ran out of Barcelona for the most. He part. also won like he had like nineteen wins and like three losses with Mexico. If we're just going off that, like. Okay, and Herrera won a gold cup, which is the highest thing you can win in CONCACAF. I think Herrera is insane. I mean, <laughs> that is true. Yes, that is 100% true. But bring him to LA Galaxy. I'm pretty sure Tom solely wants Herrera, not because he thinks he's going to be a good manager. Also, I think we all like the Galaxy sucks. He already lost to LAFC with a better team than the Galaxy have now. So... <laughs> I, it's, you know it's definitely it's a galaxy style signing the same way the galaxy brought in slots on it's just you're bringing in a big ass name <laughs> jesus christ you're, you, you know you bring in the name more memes because that means more content <laughs> i'm okay with that 
<laughs> and it's just, it doesn't it just doesn't add up um outside of um money in the stadium when you're allowed to have people back in because everyone's gonna flock to a game to see him that's about it <laughs> like, yeah but i i also don't like the galaxy want that the galaxy, the galaxy need a lot of work too and you know who knows how to work a roster with no money at first bob bradley <laughs> <laughs> on that note, on that, that note, pause was phenomenal. on that note, we have to move away because I'm not pissing off both franchises of the LA Galaxy and LA FC fans because I want to have at least one of them like us. Kind of, I mean, you already lo- like LA FC is your team. I mean, right. like, like you would have win win tonight? Tonight? My, that my, is, <laughs> That's <laughs> why you're you're saying all this because you know they're just gonna smack the Galaxy if they make that hiring. <laughs> Yeah, ain't that the truth? I I I want Herrera. It's gonna work. I, <laughs> it's not gonna work. It's gonna work. I That's hope they do it now. He just like has the worst season. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? I you hope know. that, but only because I don't like the galaxy. Both, like, both, <laughs> both can be true. Yeah, <laughs> two things can be true at the same time. Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's continue right. to talk about managers. We guys are skipping over one thing in the notes because it just flows better. But Atlanta United, I just mentioned it before, they appointed their next manager as well in Gabriel Heinze. Um, if you guys aren't familiar, I wasn't really familiar with him from his playing days, but as a player, was a center back for PSG, Man U, Marseille, Newell's Old Boys, Real Madrid, and Roma. Obviously, the highest of highs as a player, winning the uh, winning the EPL, La Liga, Ligue 1, and more. Um, obviously, playing in some of the biggest competitions in the world as a manager. Um, um, then in 2015, I guess he decided to get into, as, as a player, I meant before, sorry. 2015, he decides to get into the manager game. He goes down to Argentina, um, gets in the Argentinian first division as a manager. Doesn't really do well there. Then manages a team in the Argentinian second division, gets promoted um, with that club, and moves on to another team in Argentina. Then eventually is given the job at Velez Sarsfield. And for those who don't really know, outside of like River and Boca, um, Velez is probably like the third most highest profile job in Argentina. So not bad. Yeah, right? And it is up there too. Yeah, arguably, <laughs> right? Third, fourth, whatever it may be. Yeah, I'll, but- g- I'll give you third. All right, whatever. I mean, let him have it. Care. I'm not an Atlanta. Let him have it. So he can't have, he can't have Herrera. He can have <laughs> <laughs> But as a manager in um, mostly, all, not mostly, all of his time being in Argentina, he has 124 games managed, 58 wins, 36 draws, and 30 losses. So I guess a bit, a little bit above average as, uh, you know, managerial stat line there. But Guys, uh, we we are on this manager role here. We're on this manager hype train, talking Vanny, talking Herrera, Gabriel Heinze, Jason. I'll go to you first. Atlanta United, they are kind of trying to move away from the Frank de Boer era as quickly as possible. <laughs> bringing in Heinze, yeah, and you know he was, the, he was the guy that they wanted from day one. He was the highest profile guy that they felt like they could get, and they went out and got him. I mean, how how are you feeling about it? I think – so his trajectory is really interesting to me because of – like you just laid it out. He played at all these massive teams, won all these trophies. So very decorated player, clearly knows the game, wanted to get into managing, went to you know what he thought he knew and didn't really do that well. Um, so then he went down. He, he kind of took a step back, took what he learned, in my opinion, from that, got promoted back into that division with a new yeah. team. Um, and then kind of upgraded once again. So it seems like, like one of those trajectories where the manager could potentially just keep getting better and better. Mm -hmm. Um, so I actually do like this signing because I think there's still a lot of growth he has as a manager. And, um, I think MLS seems like a league that would be a good next step for him. So I'm really interested to see how he does. Um, and really, I, I mean, all we have to base off is his history, and it, and it looks to me like he's taking the appropriate steps, like, relatively slowly, where he's taking what he's learning and just improving and improving. And, like, when he did falter, he he kind of went – he took that step back and succeeded again. So yeah. I like that. I like that about it. Yeah, it's, it's a sense of maturity there for sure. Um, Sam? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know too much about him until – you know, going through the notes and doing a little bit of research, like he 
what Jason said, I think, sums it up completely. Like, I think he's kind of in the opinion. In, in the opinion of someone who has never watched an Argentinian first or second division game outside of like Copa Sudamericana, like it's um, it looks good. It looks like he's doing the right stuff. And, and to be managing FLS, like where you have good players uh, who've come through into MLS, like uh, Yamil Assad came from Velez, I believe. And yeah. then yeah, I. Shit. I had like two more names that I've forgotten, but I mean that was a sick uh, poll, man. I'll give you that. That was, that was a good one. I'm, I'm glad that one worked. So, uh, so I I think like you know it's obviously his team had talent, so I think he's going to be able to do well um, at Atlanta, who's now just begging to do well after last year. A team that of their own fans uh, quote, uh, "We only know success." We are not a mediocre team, and then went on to come in third to last in the East. To, to be fair to the Atlanta United fans, which I, I never want to defend them, they did only know success in the beginning. And then two years. They, they also they, lost Yosef. Yes, also lost Yosef. He's going to have been very different but, with him in the lineup. But they also completely will tell you that like last year was a shit. Well, the ones that I know and the ones that I kind of interact with will tell you that like last year was a shit show. Last year was embarrassing and a bit humbling as well. I'm, well, I, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad they've <laughs> been humbled a little, honestly. But um, yeah, so I think I, I think it's going to be good for Atlanta. I think you're going to have a healthy, healthy Joseph next year. You're going to have. Um, Barco, who's going to want to fight back after a pretty disappointing year where he was one of the main men. Yeah. It's um, it's going to be interesting with an aging defense, but you guys, you, they still have Miles Robinson. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's a good team with a lot of great core players. And I think that George Bell will probably have a really good first season. It's, it, it's interesting, right? And we'll, we'll touch on some of the Atlanta United player moves already that they've made, but I've been impressed with Heinze already, and obviously he's been there for for days at this point. Um, but you know, in his opening press conference, he comes out and says that he's not focused on winning championships; he's focused on the day to day work right now. And I think that's kind of again, Jason, to to go what you were were saying with the, earlier, and kind of what I was connecting it to. He seems very mature. He seems like he's looking at the bigger picture. And even though everyone's saying that Heinze isn't the um, he's not the long-term answer at Atlanta, that this is definitely maybe like a Patrick Vieira-esque type jump for him to kind of get some some feet under his, under him uh, for his managerial career and then move over to Europe. But Even more reason f- for success. Exactly. So if you can kind of build a culture and kind of recreate what Tata did and that you lost under Frank DeBoer, I really feel like, this could be an awesome signing for them and kind of bring Atlanta back to what we've seen in previous years. And yes, plus getting a healthy Joseph Martinez back helps that as well. But if they can go out, they can, um, you know, continue to attract that South American talent. And obviously Heinze has that connection to Argentina already. This is going to be big for them. And the fact that they also got Heinze over Marseille, who was apparently very, very interested in him, not a bad so crazy. For, for MLS either at that point, but um, happy that Atlanta United went out and they got their guy because you know even if we don't like a team personally, <laughs> it's better for the league when everyone's when everyone's pulling yes. their <laughs> All right. So we've talked about you know LAFC. We've talked about uh, not not Houston. We're talking about Houston in a second, but we talked about Atlanta United. Never Houston. Very very good teams in this league. Now let's talk about a bad one in the Houston Dynamo. Um, they dropped their rebrand along with the Houston Dash. We'll get on in a little bit, but Houston Dynamo dropped their rebrand. They've gone Houston Dynamo FC, and we have the image in front of us in our notes. But, um, Jason, you're the design guy. You like yeah. design things. Um, yeah. How are you feeling about the the Dash? Uh, so not the Dash, it's the Dynamo's rebrand. The Dash, I love. Dash, oh, is Dash. this a good logo? That's the question. Okay. Dash is fantastic. This is, is just like... To me, it just like screams like the safe route. I don't mm. know. Well, yeah, it's not. It's not bad. Like it's not horrible. It's a little weird. Like I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of it personally, but it just seems like they took a really like safe route on the readers redesign. Like they they didn't make anything interesting. It just is what it is. It says Houston Dynamo. It has an H and a D, and it's in like a. <laughs> 
It reminds yeah, me of the PG Shane. Man. Definition. Shane. What is that? A six sextagon? <laughs> a sextagon. <laughs> what is it actually called? I don't know. Hexagon. Hexagon. Is a hexagon right? It's been a while since I took geometry. Guys. Crap. Yeah, it's a hexagon. That's where. <laughs> nope. I read you also didn't know. So it didn't make uh, sense. I had to Google oh. it. Totally a sexagon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it seems to me just on. like, oh, we just want to make a new logo that's not bad. And they just took like the. Oh yeah, you don't want to take shit. <laughs> like that Leeds logo from like three years ago that they rebranded. At least take the some like interest. This or is the just... Chicago Fire. I mean, really. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have to rebrand after one year, would you, Jason? <sighs> You'd really hate to see it, you know. I have I have both logos. Ew, you should just put the sticker over the Adidas ones. So you can rock both. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I you can't like look at sticker. myself in this. Mr. Thing. Shuttleworth over here. Yeah, this one's clearly better. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know why they sent that. It just like randomly came in the mail. It's like, why did they send me a, a fucking what? tiny ball? Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. I think it's for season cool. tickets or something. But like, that's cool. I saw no, someone no. who got uh, um, Calvo, and I was like, that's way better really? than Bobby Shuttleworth. <laughs> Bobby Shuttleworth. <laughs> It's like, why did they give me Bobby Shuttlesworth? Unless, unless Big Bob wants to come on the pod, then we, then we, then we love it. Then we love it. <laughs> then we love Big it. fan, big fan if, of Bobby. If you want to talk about a podcast that will sell out for anyone, that is this podcast right here. Thank you, Bobby. You can have your ball back if you come on. <laughs> you can take your ball, Bobby. <laughs> I'll give it right back to you. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, the, the Houston Dynamo logo kind of reminds me of like a B. I, I, every time I see it, I think of a B. I don't know why, but it's like, orange. It's, it's orange. B-hive ish. Like the, the lettering. Oh, it sounds like a. Uh, what is a. Is a very. B. Oh. What, what is a B home? Beehive? Beehive. Yeah, it's very beehive like. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I meant I meant honeycomb. Oh, <laughs> What's well, a bee home? Okay. <laughs> this is why we're gonna make you feel better. You get up and discuss honeycombs or hexagons. Hexagons and beehives, you know. <laughs> bee let's, homes. Let's move forward. Merry Christmas. Uh, we are recording this during, you know, the CONCACAF Champions League final. I think it's the fourth time I've said this tonight, and I will keep saying it. But if you didn't know, CONCACAF Champions League is back. Um, it is all being held in Orlando, Florida. Um, you know, we've seen NYCFC play and get eliminated. We've seen Montreal play and get eliminated. We've seen Atlanta United play and get eliminated, even in a one nothing win. So I guess good on you for winning that one. But LAFC... They uh they're 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 doing their thing, guys. They're they're beating Cruz Azul, they're beating Club America. Now they're in the CONCACAF Champions League final. Um kind of I guess don't want to talk about it too much because I guess we'll talk about it more if they win in 2021. But this run for LAFC has been sick. Um, especially the Miguel Herrera walkie talkie in the crowd. Like it, it's been it's been absolutely insane. Any comments if you guys want to make them now about if LAFC wins? kind of how this feels as uh, a season for them. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, it's just my no favorite. Whole team has done it. But... I, I guess, I guess uh, that was a poor question, Jason. Thank um, you. This game has I, been very chippy, by the way. Have you guys yeah. seen that one? What Tristan is that goalie Black? video? Did anyone just see that? Tristan Blackman almost got kobe in the face, but he's just like, nah. Like you seven know? times. Also, yeah. also, my biggest gripe every time I go to this is, could they really not fit the C? It has to be LAX. <laughs> Did they really not fit the C? There's so much space. It looks so weird. All right. Well, I'm going to ask a better question, and I'm going to Sam first because Sam won't judge my questions. I didn't judge it. I answered it. Sam, this could potentially be the third break. trophy won by an MLS team this year with the Timbers winning MLS Cup is back, with the crew winning MLS Cup. Is this like – a bigger deal if LAFC wins CONCACAF Champions League, you feel, than like the crew going out, winning their their second MLS Cup, the Timbers going out and winning this kind of weird, created tournament? That's that's a really funny question, because I, I feel like you kind of have to look at it in a, in a bubble almost. Bubble. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I was talking. Bubble. Because, um, like, 
in the long term, like this is huge for MLS. Like if if they win tonight and um you know like MLS team beating a Liga MX team uh and just you know kind of creating hopefully what is a, a better effect for the league in the long run. On the other hand, like None of the other teams give a shit. Like, no one's rooting for LAFC tonight unless, like, you're an MLS fan as a whole. Like, excluding Galaxy fans. Yeah. And probably San Jose fans. Yeah. But, like, if you're a, um, uh, a Cincinnati fan, you don't give a shit. Like, you really I don't, disagree. probably. I just, it's I like, I totally disagree. It, well, maybe it's because Cincinnati had the hope of ever winning Concacaf Champions League, but no, I think it matters. I think it's like, way better I than just, winning MLS's back tournament. I mean, oh no, I, I don't think that. But I think in the long run, I'd rather win MLS Cup than than the Concacaf Champions League. I think one of them is a little bit um, more important. Jason, you seem a little fired up. I want to hear it. I think I he's really pissed off at me right now. No, 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 no. I, I'm not mad. This is this is like, like the supporters' shield fight all over again. <laughs> But it's on no, camera. It's just, like, it's CONCACAF Champions League. Like, you could say they don't care or not, but, like, Tigres cares to win this game. Like, I care. But I want LAFC to win. You're an MLS fan, though. I don't see why people wouldn't want MLS to do what. Like, if they win this game, this is a f- legitimately the first what does it time. Do, what does it do for MLS, like, in the long run, then? In the long run? Like, what is it going to do? One win here is like we're no longer just like a pissing pot for the rest of the continent. Like, think about. <clears throat> yeah, that's probably fair. You finally have that, like, <laughs> well, we did win the CONCACAF Champions League. And who knows? Maybe this uh, shows we other MLS twice. teams that, no. like, no, hey, we never won. We won the CONCACAF Cup. Uh, yeah. Like, isn't it a different <laughs> thing? <laughs> That would come from a DC United fan, first of all. <laughs> a win's a win. I, I think you're wrong. I think legitimately this is a, this would be very important for MLS. I mean, yeah, especially I was especially in the I MLS team win every year, but instantly. I just but especially in the long run. Like if they win this, they'll always be remembered as like the first MLS team to win CONCACAF Champions League. Okay, not, yeah, that, not unless then, they're the first to do down. it, but like what how does say? this affect Columbus next season? It doesn't. It doesn't As affect the next Columbus season. three seasons down the road. It doesn't. But Sam, the 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 only I'm difference... just being an asshole at this point. Let's please disagree That's with fine. everything I say. That's fine. The only difference that I really like I'm seeing with you and your point is like LAFC wins this. LAFC gets it. first of all, they win a global competition, yeah. which yes, hasn't been done. And they since don't the get smoked by Liverpool at the Club World Cup. But <laughs> Okay, but you fact, play Liverpool, okay? The fact, there you go. They so, play Liverpool in the summer. They play them in the summer. They're just no. friendly. Yeah, nobody cares. No, but this is a comp- no this is an World actual Cup. game competition where LAFC could match up against Liverpool, fucking Madrid, right? That's who no. won La Liga. No, yeah, it's, uh, no, it's, it's only who wins the Champions League in every uh, in every. Whatever, I don't give a shit. Fucking so. LAFC, like Liverpool. Liverpool. I don't care. Africa. Jurgen Klopp uh, with Bob Bradley going at each other on a sideline. Give me that in my fucking veins. Let's it go. puts it a different for respect for the for. league. It puts a different respect for the league. Do you watch the Club World Cup? No, I don't even know where to watch it. Yeah, because it's not yeah, on any TV. But like, I will you watch you it. Get it. But I know about it. <laughs> <laughs> No, the UEFA Champions League wins it every year. I know Liverpool won. <laughs> oh, that's the wrong one. Um, okay. <laughs> Whatever. I'm Whatever. saying is... this would be, in my opinion, and in uh, Jason, tell I'm me if you disagree. I'm not saying this isn't a big I'm... deal. I'm just like saying I you don't. You just think... said it wasn't a big deal. No, what I said it's not word? as big of a deal for an MLS team as it is to win their league's championship. I still disagree. Yeah, same. I'd rather the Tottenham won the uh, the EPL than I would if they won the Champions League. Not that they're in the Champions League. Well, they League can't before. win both. So that <laughs> first of all, I'm just saying, no. like, if I had a choice, I'd pick the league. Really? 
a knockout competition versus a, a year long event, like yeah, I would. I think you might be in the minority in that statement, but that's fair. That's fair. I both. I think both one's both. a lot harder to win. The the one where you play every team twice. Well, yeah, you played thirty some games in the exactly. league, but it, it's not about like difficulty, like. Winning the Champions League, like winning the UEFA Champions League, is is like one of the highest trophies you can win, if not the highest. Yeah, the guy who won five is really happy over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but regardless, like that's no, great. We're done. Event. We're done. We're done. We're moving on. That's it. <laughs> Kyle Beckerman, he's retired <laughs> from professional soccer. <laughs> Sam, love that. I concede. I'm done. Okay. Oh, that was Let's get the number right. Come on. It's not my favorite team. I wouldn't know. All right. Kyle Beckerman, he retired from professional soccer this past week. The uh, the dreaded defensive midfielder, and pun intended, played for Real Salt, Real Salt Lake, the Rapids, U.S. Men's National Team, and, of course, what we most remember him for being part of those Miami Fusion squad, of course. Uh, 21 professional Miami. seasons, <laughs> over 550 club games in his career, 58 caps for the U.S. MNT, represented the U.S. Uh, men's National Team at a World Cup, won the 2013 Gold Cup, won the 2009 MLS Cup, eight M- eight-time MLS All-Star, was a captain for the RSL team for a long time, and that RSL team that made the 2013 Champions League final. Kyle Beckerman's a legend of M- MLS, a legend of U.S. soccer. Those dreads should be cut off and framed and put down in the uh, the Hall of Fame next to <laughs> Dallas Stadium. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I-, I think I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> yeah, one of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to check. To go. <laughs> any any thoughts no. on, on Bex before we move on, guys? Uh, Maryland guy squad. Um, that's all I, I thought got. That was, yeah, Beckman, I thought you were like, like he he's. I mean, he's someone who, when I came into soccer, was at the top of his game, and yeah. Um, I mean, I can't believe he's retiring now. Like, I thought he should have done it a couple years ago, but. <laughs> Kyle Beckerman, I, I think, is just one of those guys who, when you look back on the league in a couple of years, um, he's going to be one of the greater greater uh, players that we'll have had. And, you know, to, to have, what, a 20-year career, it's incredible. Like, most most professional athletes do not have 20-year careers. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, I mean, I when I'm, like... Uh, you know, we're all, I guess, younger fans of Major League Soccer, right? Like, we're not, we don't remember the 90s and the early 2000s as much, but... I was a small child. When, when I think yeah. um, the the stud demons <laughs> in this league, like, historically, you know, I think Kyle Beckerman, Ozzy Alonso, and I think Diego Chara, like, to be completely frank, those are the big three that I think of. Dax McCarty, I think you can throw in there as well. And okay. it's, I don't know, he's he's... Beckerman's an I mean, absolute there's so much respect for Kyle Beckerman. Like, he's yeah. All. Have you seen all the people on Twitter who have been blocked by Kyle Beckerman? No, but that's yeah, really Rob funny. Like, been blocked by him for no reason. <laughs> that's really funny that he he just like uh, blocks people. Like, I just imagine him on Twitter like, him. "Fuck this guy, block!" <laughs> like, just a <laughs> random dude who just says some negative comment. Like, nope. I think the dread comes down and clicks. Hey, we have Vaughn. <laughs> it has its own mind. Oh, we mentioned Michael Bradley. Oh, Vaughn. What's up, man? Yeah, Michael Bradley. Hey, uh, Yo, this oh, is better than that guy from, guy from last week. Mick, Michael Bradley. <laughs> I don't know if I put Michael Bradley in the Diego Chara, uh, Ozzy Alonzo, Kyle Beckerman, Dax McCarty conversation. What about you guys? I think you probably have to like the way. I mean, yeah, I think I think think we all have a sour taste in our mouth for for Michael Bradley, but he is a stud defensive midfielder. No, I'm I'm like I don't know. I'm a fan of Michael Bradley. I like Bradley. I just. I don't know if I think of him as the same like kind of like midfield destroyer as I think of those other four. You think he's more well, of a he, he well, he's different. more of a playmaker. Yeah, he he just play, he has a different style, but he's still yeah. like a phenomenal defensive mid. Nah, he's fine. Whatever. Whatever. You're just thinking of like specific styles. Come I, on, I guess the, horizon. the style I'm thinking of, I don't 
I wouldn't put Michael Bradley in that conversation. So fair point, Jason. Fair, fair point. point. Fair point. All right. <laughs> thanks, Vaughn, for the question in the chat. Yeah, one fair um, point today, Jason. That's what you got. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Send me going forward. at me all time. No, let's I'll move just forward. Remember that um that Kyle Beckerman did not win the Champions League either, but we don't get looked down on him for it. But <laughs> ladies, <laughs> ladies, please. All right, let's talk about another MLS legend leaving his club, not retiring from the game, but leaving his club. Um, it, it was announced, I think, two weeks ago now that Matt Beasler is leaving Sporting Kansas City. Um, you know, eleven years with SKC. Over 340 games played for the club, raised an MLS Cup for them, three-time U.S. Open Cup champion, two-time MLS Best 11, one-time MLS Defender of the Year, and a four-time MLS All-Star, all with Sporting Kansas City. Last year, seemed to lose his starting spot with SKC, so the writing was kind of on the wall for this. Um, Matt Beasler, again, you know. Come to the fire. We could use him. <laughs> I was about to say, where do you see Matt Beasler going? I don't think the fire is a bad chat, Jason. Yeah, I mean, I'd be ecstatic. Are you kidding me? <laughs> a, a veteran MLS guy playing on your back line, not even doesn't have to be a starter. I think just having him rotating on your back line, like I he think probably that. would be a starter <laughs> <laughs> for us. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he, he could. He's one of those guys who has so much experience in so many games and quality performances that yeah. honestly, anywhere he goes, I think he's going to be beneficial to that club. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you, Sam. Uh, do you have any thoughts on a club you feel like could use the uh, the help of a of a Matty Bees? You know, I don't know if they they need him, but a place I I think would be kind of fun to see Matt Beasler would be um, the Revs. I think having the Revs would be a lot of fun. Him and Matt Turner, a little reunitement with uh, Bruce Arena too. Oh. Sure, they don't like each other, do they? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know yeah, their relationship. I think Bruce burns down a lot of bridges. Hey, Brooklyn. Our, our our game, Brooklyn okay. his brother. Vaughn with the knowledge. I love yeah. it. Vaughn Pullman in the chat. Uh, RSL to play with his brother, fill in for Anunwa. Um, I mean, I I like it. I, I I don't I don't hate it at all. Does yeah. Nick play center back or does Nick play D mid? I think he plays D mid. I don't really but know much about Troy or is he like more of a nuance? I think he's more of a Bradley. If we're going to go back oh, to that conversation. Nuance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's move forward, guys. We have a little bit more to talk about. And there has been a lot of MLS roster movements within this past, I guess, two weeks or week and a half since um, Columbus Crew have raised the MLS Cup. A lot from Austin FC, a lot from FC Dallas. We're not going to go through all of them. Um, I guess we'll start off with one each and we'll see kind of how long that goes for, guys. But, uh, Sam, I'll go to you first. What's uh, one player move that you've liked? Uh, so far this offseason. This, this is this is ours. I have to hate myself again. Yep. I uh, I really like that Brady Scott got picked up in the expansion draft. <laughs> I I also like um like a not goalkeeper. If you if you would like me to do a not goalkeeper, no, man. I really man. like that um that Brady Scott got picked up. I think uh, coming back from uh, Cologne um, this year to go to Nashville never really got a shot to start. Um, and he he was um what U U twenty three action or U twenty action he was yeah. the best goalkeeper with David Ochoa so to have him and um Ochoa in the Western Conference this next year is going to be nice and I I have to assume that Brady Scott's going to be the starter in in Austin unless they get some um you know guy who's been around the league for a while like I, I have to imagine they're not bringing him in in an expansion draft just to to sit on their bench for a couple years. Like he, I think he's ready to play. I was really hoping you were going to bring up Brady Scott and I kind of feel like you were. So I had a few <laughs> Brady Scott points. Oh, uh, I'm talking about Brady Scott. Yeah. So, I'm a big Brady Scott guy. I like, I buy him in FIFA. Like most no, years. I, he's I, a good I, player. I think Nashville signed Brady Scott with the intentions of, of him being like the future guy behind Joe Willis, mm -hmm. but Joe Willis, I mean, shutout leader last year, right? Like I think he, oh, was, he was a very good. Yeah, very and good. Above, 
all expectations in net. And, you know, they're obviously going to roll with him. So leaving Brady Scott unprotected for the expansion draft kind of just makes sense. I don't really think protecting your backup keeper or potentially, you know, even a keeper you're going to loan out to USL is really the thing you're going to do. So picking up Brady Scott, I think, is a sick move by Austin. I think it could potentially be a similar case. And I always I always make this reference. I know I do. But I really feel like it could be a similar case to Zach Steffen, where Steffen didn't really have his success over in Europe. He comes back to MLS, goes on a short stint loan to USL. Then he gets a shot at being a starter in MLS. And he exceeds all expectations, gets a shot back over in Europe. And now we see what Zach Steffen is doing. He's starting against Arsenal today in the FA Cup or the Carabao Cup, whichever one was today. But... <laughs> I really think Brady Scott could be on that type of level. I really like him talent wise. And he's still also, he's 21 years old. Like he's so, so young. I really like this move. I kind of hope um, he can, whatever other keepers Austin brings in, I really hope kind of he can win the competition and be that starting guy next year because I'm, I'm a fan of the kid. I really, really am. Uh, Jason, you have any Brady Scott takes or if you want to kind of roll into your pick? Yeah, I was just going to roll into my pick. I don't have much on that. Um, okay. But I really liked uh, LAFC picking up Marco Farfan from Ooh, Portland. Yes. I think that <clears throat> I think that gives them a ton of help. Uh, I, obviously, like their defense was not nearly as good as it was two years ago this past season, so they needed some defensive help. And then Farfan is young and pretty decent, uh, and I think he could kind of come in and immediately kind of help that defense. Uh, just be better. <laughs> no, I mean, I feel like Farfan was a guy who had a lot of hype around him within Portland. It's like, eventually he's going to be the next left back. Eventually he's going to be the next left yeah. back. And then just never kind of came through. And like, he's also still, he's very young still. He's also 22 he's, years old. Yeah, 22. He's he's had some, I think he was in the last, I mean, obviously this is going back months now, but the last U23 camp, you know, I think he's been around the game a little bit. Um, and he's he's obviously impressed enough. And I think for me, I have to trust that Bob Bradley's bringing a guy in. I have to trust that, you know, he's doing something or he can be, he has the ability to do something greater in the future. And you know, LAFC, they have very young, talented left backs in, um, you know, Sefuentes. And I think they also brought in Raheem Edwards, who can kind of play anywhere along that left side of the field. But I like the addition of Farfan. I, I really think, you know, Bob is really just kind of stacking up on talent because, you know, he's trying to make a run at the Club World Cup, you know? <laughs> Sam, did you have any, uh, I knew that was coming. coming. I knew I thought it was going to be from Jason, but I knew that was coming. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Very good. I'm um, yeah. kind of sad that I didn't think of that. <laughs> that, was, that was excellent, Tom. Um, Marco Farfan is great, like, but it was like three years ago he was he was breaking into that starting lineup because he was like 19 years old. You know, he was young and, and just needed game time, and that was very tough. Timbers too was a bit of a shamble, but. Uh, what happened was that, like, that summer, Timbers brought in Jorge Viafania, and mm. it was like, well, like, you're not starting. <laughs> you're not starting. You're barely going to get game time now, kid. And, and it was a shame because he's their home. He was one of their top homegrown players for a while. And so, you know, n- nothing was able to amount with him because he wasn't going to get that playing time. And, um, you know, I think it's a good move. It'll be nice to see him hopefully um, uh, grow, grow with LAFC. Yeah, it would be nice to kind of, you know, have a, another left back in the U.S. men's national team pool, too. Yeah, and <laughs> if, if we have Bob growing him in L.A., then I, you know, I think that's a that's a good thing as the easily, I think, the best coach in Major League Soccer. But and Bob's a good gardener. I, he's a very good gardener. I'm going to go into my pick now. Um, this one may sting a little bit, Jason, but Georgie Mihalovic getting traded Ooh. from Chicago Fire to the Montreal Impact in a move where Thierry Henry called for this move. Thierry Henry wanted Georgie. Uh, Thierry Henry called up Georgie after the trade saying, like, you know, I spent almost it, – it could potentially go up to a million dollars in general allocation money uh, when everything's said and done for him. Oh. That has to be a good-ass feeling for Georgie that Thierry Henry was like, I'm going to go spend a million dollars in allocation money to come get me. Um, Georgie, you know, has, I think a few U S men's national team camps. Clearly he's yeah. around the U S 23 Olympic, uh, roster picture, still 22 years old. He's been around the fire. When I saw he had 75 appearances for the fire, that kind of blew my mind that it was that many, but 
he's been around uh, the fire for a while now. And I mean, Jason, I kind of want to go to you because, you know, you're the fire fan That's on this cool. podcast. But I, there, there's multiple layers here. For Georgie, it has to feel great. The fire got a crap ton of money. The impact got a super talented young American. Like, I don't know. What were your thoughts when you saw this kind of go through? Honestly, like, you guys might be surprised, but I'm, I'm not that mad about it. Is that because of the money? But the money is great, right? And if we can turn, like I said, I think on Twitter, like if we can turn that into something great, like an attacking midfielder who really can be a playmaker for us, like phenomenal. But regardless, like a million dollars is a fuckload of money for Georgie Mihalovic. Also, like there's the underlying things where a lot of stories I've heard about Georgie from people who have talked to him. Uh, I have a friend that like works for the fire and is, been around him he's he's kind of like personality wise like not the greatest human being um and okay they obviously there was some butting heads with uh rafael wiki who's the head coach now um this past season so overall like i i wish him the best like i hope he does really well um but uh I think it was like it was just something that was kind of going to happen and it was just a matter of time. And what we got for him for someone that I think Wiki didn't really love that much or want to use at at a set. I think that's pretty good. I think we got a good haul. Um and I just hope we can turn that into something really good. Because I mean with that much money you really can change your team. So Jason coming in with some inside of the locker room oh. detail. Yeah, I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, look, it's I think you know you'd hit the nail on the head there as a as a fire fan. Um, Sam, do you have anything you want to say about Georgie? Or we can go for a, a second round of, of player moves if you have one. I have one more that I would really like to talk about and see what your guys' opinion is. I don't watch a lot of San Jose games. I started to. <laughs> Oh, but I don't watch me. a lot of games because uh, they don't follow me on Twitter, so that's why I don't. <laughs> or so me. I don't yeah, but I think Nick they blocked Lima. me. <laughs> Nick Lima was so good at that first Greg Burhalter camp. The the things he did, like where he was moving from right back into into central uh, defense and then up the field is that kind of like right wing back kind of thing. Like he was very very good, and then. You know, nothing really happened. Like, you stopped calling him in because you, you were pulling the European players back in. And it was kind of just, like, stagnant. But it was, like, Nick Lima in the back of my head at all times. I was like, yeah, man. Like, this guy could be really, really good. Um, and so I've kind of kept that in the back of my head. And to see him go to um, go to Austin in a trade, I, I think that could be really, really nice. I think a, a, a fresh start where he's going to be that starter every week will do him really good. Nick and, Lima and has a hundred games played. Yeah, so, no fucking way. Yeah, yeah. I know. So, um, look, I just for you guys and for the people listening at home and everything like that. I take my stats that I pull up for our note sheet from TransferMarkt. I don't take it from Wikipedia. Uh, TransferMarkt does count like U.S. Open Cup games, like all that stuff. So that's the so hundred insane. games. I think he's a rookie, like two years ago. He's twenty six. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> so he was definitely a rookie when we were on this podcast, which was not that long ago. I feel. No, I mean I was pushing for him for rookie of the year. I can remember that. So that's that's oh tough. All right, let's let's go look this up. But Nick <laughs> wow. Lima, I'll, I'll I'll go with a similar vein that kind of Jason was going with. And obviously, I don't have a uh, insider pull into the San Jose Earthquake <laughs> locker room, but. Nick Lima, apparently, um, Pelle, uh, Pellegrini, Jesus Christ, uh, Matias Almeida, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he wasn't the biggest fan of Nick Lima. Didn't really see Nick Lima fitting into his plans. Um, obviously, you know, Tommy Thompson uh, took over that starting right back role. And Such Shea a Salinas, weird move for Tommy Thompson. <laughs> Shea Salinas was uh, playing back for most of the majority of, of last season. So, it, clearly... Nick Lima was on his way out of San Jose, really, no matter what. Um, I think San Jose, kind of similar to what you were saying, Jason, they got a nice pull for Nick Lima. I don't know. I like Nick Lima a lot. I don't know if he's worth almost half a million dollars in allocation money. Um, but at the end of the day, 
Nick Lehm is a starter in this league. He's okay. Daniel Lovitz esque to me. Um, and I think even better than, than Lovitz to be completely honest, but I, I like him. I think this is a good solid move for Austin and Austin's made a lot, a lot of moves that we are not going to be able to talk about all of them, but this is a solid piece to start building your back line. Yeah. Well, Nick, Nick Lima and Ben Sweat, who's another guy that Austin got, like those are probably that's their good. outside backs starting. Yeah. Team. That's a pretty good, that's really good duo start. of outside backs. Solid Nick start. Lima was a rookie in 2017. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that. honestly, but I, I actually really like the Nick Lima. I think this was a good get for uh, yeah. Austin. Nick Lima, answer my DM on Twitter so we can get you on the show. He's been on. He's, he's been a friend of the pod once. Uh, has he? Yeah. Yeah. Big friend of the pod. Big friend, yeah. huge big, friend, big of pod. friend of the pod that I did not pay attention to. Apparently. It was a while back. It was a while back. It's all good. All right. Nick um, Lima, answer my message anyway because I like you. Jason. You have a uh, another player you want to talk about quickly? Um, quickly, I just want to talk about uh, Andrew Gutman going to Atlanta. Well, I, can I throw in a quick, quick little asterisk about this? Yes. It, it's a re-entry draft pick, and there is like a little weird thing here with him being on loan from Celtics. So <laughs> Atlanta still – he has to sign a contract with Atlanta – and Atlanta have to work a deal out with Celtic on a loan deal, or obviously buy oh, right, right. B. So well, they're... either way, like almost like a waste. I'm still sad he left the fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was um, he on the fire? No, but he was like a homegrown. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, something fell apart there. I, we're just going to blame Nelson Rodriguez, which is what we do with all our issues because they usually all go back to him. I love um, it. Love but, Nelson. I, I just think he, he's a solid player that just needs a con- consistency. I'm like, I don't know where he's going to fight. Maybe USL would be the spot for him at this point, but he just needs somewhere to play consistently. Really, this was just me just wanting to talk about Andrew Gutman because That's I missed him. <laughs> hey, this is why we have a podcast to talk about. Heck yeah. Man. So I'm with you. I like Andrew Gutman a lot. I think he was in a shitty situation with FC Cincinnati. Um I really feel like if he's given some consistency, like you said, some talent around him, things could work out well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's all these rumors around George Bellow being sold to Europe sooner rather than later in the Bundesliga, especially. So maybe this was like Atlanta's backup plan to kind of get a backup left back. I will say they also did just sign Mikey Ambrose back, um, who was gone for that one year to enter Miami. So maybe things aren't working out with Gutman and contract talks and Celtic or whatever it may be. But I mean, I would love it. I, I would really love it. I feel like yeah. he kind of excel in, in a club sure. like that, but um, we'll see about that. But I have one more I really want to talk about, and there's there's so many moves that I feel like we kind of touch on a little bit, but I really want to talk about kind of the the combination of moves from FC Dallas, and I mentioned it today on Twitter. Dallas is doing a lot this transfer window, and I kind of really want to talk about it more, and I think they're feeling the pressure from Austin. I really think they're, they're feeling like Austin's coming in. Austin, according to uh, whatever Jersey website, I think it was World Soccer Shop, they had the highest selling jersey in the state of Texas this holiday. Oh, yeah, I saw them. They, they, they're coming in with a bang. Matthew McConaughey's pounding his chest and he's doing <laughs> promo reads for MLS. And he's, you know, like Austin's the shit right now. Everyone's talking about Austin. They have this natural fan base growing and it, it's, it's kind of awesome to see, really. I don't like everything Austin's doing, but it's pretty cool with, with, with what's going on with them. And I think Dallas is feeling it. And they're trying to do the best they can. They went out this week. They signed a center back, a 27-year-old center back from La Liga, a veteran of La Liga, and Jose Antonio Martinez. Guy looks pretty good. I watched a few of his highlights, a little bit of his stuff on YouTube, and seems like a very lanky, very athletic center back. So I like that move there, maybe to pair him with Matt Hedges. Um, They go out. They sign a right winger from Colombia who scored 25 goals in two seasons for his club. Maybe a dude who just finally can learn how to score. They bring back their young 21-year-old goalkeeper from uh, Brazil, from Gremio in Brazil on loan. Um, he's an active member of Brazil's youth national team. Like he's, I think, has appearances for them. Like he's consistently playing for them and getting called into camps. Like I like what Dallas is doing. I like the kind of direction they're going in. It just comes down to like they need a striker. <laughs> they need a dude who can score. <laughs> 
they it, it's nice to have these pieces. It's nice to share up the defense, bring in a solid winger like they have, but they need a number nine. I don't know if Frank O'Hara is it. Ricardo Pepe's only 17. Jesus Ferrara is kind of in a wishwash of where his true position is. They need a striker if they want to be real in Major League Soccer, like in competing for MLS Cup. And I don't know. I kind of just really like what Dallas is doing overall. Yeah. I um I don't know. Dallas Dallas needs to rework because I think for a long time it, it was well, Dallas is the team that pulls up all the youth players. And it's like yeah. that's really, really good. But <laughs> you guys aren't doing anything to show for it. They had that one golden year when they won Supporter Shield and it was wonderful. And it's just kind of all gone downhill. Luchi Gonzalez is really, I think, holding together a team that that just needs work. No, you're you're not wrong, but I feel like every year they're also on like the cusp of like making. Well, that's just it. like they're close, but they could be better. Yeah. <laughs> no, 100%. They, like with the right moves, like with spending the money. I mean, we we know our guy will will tell you you got to spend a little bit of money for Dallas, and, and they could be real. So, yo, I'm so happy for Will. Really, really happy for him. He's 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 living his life down there. But um, actually, one more thing I want to talk about player wise because we probably should mention it, and it's Alex Ring, um, because he went for a shit ton of allocation money. So New York City FC traded Alex Ring to Austin FC for, again, if everything goes well with production on the field, probably other scenarios met, could go for $1.25 million Damn. in general allocation money. I really need to figure out how all this this allocation money works. Well, <laughs> now it's a lot. lot easier. There's no more TAM. There's It's only GAM. That's true. Only That's GAM. True. So, so it's now it's just money is what we should call it. <laughs> yeah. and so we could just remove the part. Yeah, why do you even stuff. need GAM if there's only one? Because yeah. one point it's MLS. in GAM isn't equal to like 1.25 in like normal money. Because there's other like <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> but whatever. We're not into that. We're not talking about that. We're, no, I'm, we're MLS fans. We're into we that talk kind about, of shit. Can you guys uh, see the Brian Reynolds stuff? Yeah. So. Oh I mean, yeah. I quickly, feel like we should just mention that. I mean, you're talking about yes. Dallas a second ago, but quickly, very, very sad. Alex Ring is gone. It's a great piece from Austin. Yeah. You're getting a guy who can play multiple positions. He's a stud. He's a top ten, top five player in his position in Major League Soccer. Love Austin it. Austin putting together a nice team. Yeah, starting yeah. off pretty strong. Yeah. Um, Brian Reynolds. How'd that happen? What'd you say? How that happen? Uh, <laughs> Matthew <Conaghy. laughs> Hello, Hello, Okay. Um, Brian Reynolds, Jason, I mean, that's a great point. Sam and I, I feel like we mentioned it like two or three podcasts ago, but we didn't really like yeah. talk about it. It's, well, like, exactly it's, it's like 10 Detroit million to Juventus yeah. at this point, possibly. Oh, yeah. and, and Roma wants him. And, Club uh, Rouge. Yeah. I heard that, uh, like personal agreement was made with Juventus. Ooh. So the last thing that I saw, and again, it, it, I feel like it's, it's constantly a lot of like, Oh, is that a goal? Oh, let's go, baby. Oh, I'm behind. I'm definitely behind. <laughs> oh. I'm, on the, I'm behind that thing. Hang on. You guys just did a corner. Oh, oh wait. <sighs> Holy shit. That was a wow. Diego. That was a hell of a goal. How I'll give you that. Behind wow. am I? What Diego that? I, Jason? I thought I was behind. I'm in the first half. Yo, that's I'm I'm just the I'm not in the first half. I'm not in the first half. But I'm in like, like the 60th minute. That's the MLS yeah. golden boot leader right there. All right. right. Oh, you mean the guy I voted for um, MLS Aces MVP? Yeah, he didn't win. Sam, you're not know? allowed to get excited that they just scored, though, because it means – No, no, no. No, like I – Got me on that one. <laughs> you're allowed to get excited. <laughs> Like I think I even said, like as an MLS fan, you can. But I said for someone who, whatever. <laughs> Shut okay. up, I'm just giving you shit. I'm just giving you shit. All right. I, I was not celebrating like Tom was. To be fair, <laughs> I'd wake up my daughter, and that would end so poorly for me tonight. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, don't then do you're that. gonna have an extra little co-host on screen. With me. <laughs> well, no, that's the worst. Yeah, uh, we get all the likes. Yeah, we we get likes and views there. <laughs> but um, back to Brian Reynolds, the last thing I saw on Twitter about Brian Reynolds was that uh, there's the three remaining clubs in for the race for him is Juve, Roma, and Club Bruges. Roma and Club Bruges being the closest. Club Bruges, what are they doing? Maybe it's in Horvath, man. All the oh, Americans. Yeah, but they're like fighting with like Juve and Roma. 
That's uh, crazy. Whatever. So they do do good in the Champions League. They did, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> but apparently, uh, Bruges and Roma are the closest to the uh, the asking fee for da- that which Dallas want for um, for Reynolds. And I don't know. I everyone's saying Reynolds could be like this legit right back. And we've seen him play for barely 20 games yeah, in the professional career. Se- well, I just looked it up. He's played 17 MLS games and two games in the playoffs. 19 yeah. total. He, he's like, really don't he get me $9 million. Like, oh my he gosh. has four assists, but like, yeah, seriously. Oh, that's impressive. Right? But I mean, I guess, Sam, to your point before, this is the reputation Dallas has built, you know, from yeah. – from Weston McKenney to Reggie Cannon to to whoever else you want to talk about leaving Dallas to going to Europe. Europe. But what not to Europe. <laughs> Who? I said Kellen Acosta. But then you said to Europe, and I was like, damn it. Yes. What was so, it? Um, Castillo. Being Castillo yeah. for, for a minute. Yeah. The, the developed talent that they have pulled out of their academy and now have gone on to do fantastic things. Can, Reggie Cannon, you know – Impressing in Portugal, um, Weston McKenney going from Schalke to now being fully bought out by Juve, like to being like a consistent starter, and right exactly <laughs> Dallas is building a reputation around them. And I feel like instead of like, and I think I can't remember who said this. I want to say it was Sam Stagecole or Paul Tenorio, one of them. You know, instead of clubs wanting to buy a guy like Brian Reynolds from, let's say, I don't know some middle tier European team and spending $15 million on him. I'm going to go straight to Dallas and buy him for $6 million. But guess what? $6 million in major league soccer is a lot of money at the end of the day and can fund FC Dallas as Academy for the next three years and build more. You know, it, it's just, this is what you want to do. And this is Dallas. This was Dallas's and still is Dallas's long-term plan. And, you know, if Ren- if this rental deal gets pulled off, which seems like it's going to happen, like, I feel like I'm going to pull up Twitter any day now and it's going to be like, rental. It's been like a week. I feel like this is completed. It's, it's, it's insane. So, I mean, unless, I mean, you know, Sam, you want to, you want to say anything about Brian Reynolds or do you want to kind of. Uh, yeah. Only because I pulled up some stats on uh, Reggie Cannon. Um, so what, Jason, what did you say? It was like 19 games, four assists. Like, yeah, that's crazy. Like in Reggie Cannon's first 19 games, he had a goal. That was it. Like his first, <laughs> his first season was 33 games, uh, one goal, two assists. Like that, and he played almost every minute of every game that season. But like, you know, the, the numbers that Brian Reynolds is putting up is crazy. It's just nuts. Yeah. Like, so I can only imagine, like, if we saw that more long term, that we'd see um, greater numbers. So it's like you already put out a top tier right back in Reggie Cannon. Now you're pulling this guy out and Roma wants him. Like, oh, my God. It's also nuts that a year ago, none of us knew who Brian Reynolds was. Unless you were like, you know. No, I'm not. I'm not even that deep into it. To know well, I'm not saying, like, Roma unless you're like. A, a, a Roma might be. But unless you're like this deep like FC Dallas fan, you know, like this super hardcore Dallas fan, you didn't know who Brian Reynolds was. I had to do my research on him and found out Brian Reynolds was a failed winger that or sorry, a failed striker that got pushed back to right back and now he's excelled to a potential, you know, your high class European level. It's 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 insane. And I really He's also a, a right fielder for the San Francisco Giants, apparently. <laughs> This <laughs> guy's first Google Brian Reynolds. He's a baseball player. That came up to me. I had to put FC Dallas. Super, super versatile. And <laughs> if we can get, you know, a little Brian Reynolds or Gino Dest fullback action too, I'm not, I'm already hyping this kid up after 17 games played, but let's go. I mean, it's <laughs> Reggie, do that. I'm, I'm I'm out on Reggie. I'm Brian Reynolds. I'm a Brian Anthony Reynolds. Anthony Robinson. Like, come on. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Cool. Let's move forward, guys. Wow. Let's let, let's move away from the MLS talk. We've He's the youngest long. homegrown in Dallas history. Is he? Uh, as of April 2019, he was. He's probably okay. not anymore. Yeah, Dallas is signing a ten-year-old. That's just he unbelievable. Probably, would that even surprise you? Did you oh, see no, Wayne Rooney's really son got signed to Manchester United? Yeah. yeah, I could have gone to DC United. Ridiculous. <laughs> God damn it, Wayne. <laughs> You're so Wayne, what the hell? Wayne literally is the manager for Darby County. You could have had him in the system. 
No. He also basically managed uh, DC United. This this kid's gonna. He did. This, basically, this kid's he gonna a loan deal to Darwin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, it's a youth loan, so he can just like train with his dad all day. Exactly. That's all it is. His dad just screaming at him on the sideline. Are Darby and like Manchester close? Like, no. I have no idea. Vaughn, okay. are, are Darby and picture. Manchester close? <laughs> Um, cool. Okay. MLS talk is over, guys. Let's kind of jump into some other things. We mentioned this before. NWSL has been it's it's been going nuts in its own fucking right. So Jason, I'm gonna be be leaning on you a lot here. Sam, I know you have your takes, but Jason, I gotta lean on you. Go go to Jason. So (laughs) we talked about the Houston Dynamo rebrand. Houston Dash rebrand is absolute fucking fire. Far superior. (laughs) Loved it. Aren't they owned by the same like? It's the same ownership group. group. Wait, how did they fail so hard on one and succeed so well on the other? Because one club is really successful and the other is a failure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Well, I mean, I'm fine with that. The Dash are the money makers, right? I mean, (laughs) the Dash have the most recent, most recent titles. Just pulling in. Yeah, Rachel Daly, like big names over there. Is Daly really coming count. back from the West Ham loan? I I kind of feel like most of these people are players are coming back. You think? Besides a couple. I, I don't, don't know think. what Tobin Heath and Kristen Press are going to do. I was going to say, I don't well. like, they're, they're, I, I couldn't back. imagine them leaving. They're also not playing at Louisville. Like, there's no, no. fucking chance in hell. <laughs> like, the well, only like, reason they got drafted is because Louisville could do that, I guess. But... Like, they like were Rose is playing in Manchester. What? Like Rose Lavelle is not playing in Manchester City. Like she's got to come back, right? She'll come back. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous that she's not playing in Manchester. Same City. You. Like every time she's on the field, she's like their best player. Yeah. So. Yeah, she's out of position. Yes, that too. She's playing out of position. Sam Mewis has, you know, obviously excelled. Um, She's playing very well, but imagine if you had Mewis and Lavelle playing. It's like, imagine how that could look. <laughs> but I don't, know, I don't really have to imagine. I can just go look at some games. Just watch a U.S. Yeah. women's national team game. Right? <laughs> it, it works. Um, but no, so the Houston Dash, their rebrand has looked really cool. And I guess we can talk about this because, Sam, you you wanted to bring this up in the uh, the group chat before. What? Alex Morgan set to uh, leave England and come back to the <laughs> it, no, that you're a bitter Tottenham fan. I get it. I get it. Uh, is there Bro. any other type of Tottenham fan? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're usually drunk, though, all the time. <laughs> but I did yeah. want to ask this, and this is, you know, mainly, I think I know the answer, but Alex Morgan's set for Angel City, right? Like, this is the best way. I that, mean, she'll probably this play is the one. in Orlando. Really? I see her playing this season. Yeah. That's true. Yes, but I'm saying it's you have to play somewhere. Plan that like the arguably the biggest name, right? Um, even I'm saying to like the average woman soccer fan, and yeah, yeah. knows who Alex Morgan is. Yeah, who doesn't know who Alex Morgan is, right? Yeah, yeah. She's pretty much de- <laughs> definitely there. What's interesting is like I know like a lot of these players probably want to go to Angel City. Like Kristen Press probably wants to go there too. She's from that area. Mm-hmm. Um. There's a lot of California-based U.S. women's national team players. So, oh yeah, maybe or, Megan or Pino actually you know. wants to play in in a game, and <laughs> that's not yeah in a club game. Please, someday. <laughs> you know, women's player of the year hasn't played a club game in like 17 years. It's fine. Um, oh, fuck. Um, we're gonna ignore that. Um, and <laughs> shit, that, that I'm hurts. still so far behind. God damn. I hate Kenneth Vermeer. I just want to say that. It's not Kenneth Vermeer. It's the guy. Uh, it was the defender whose name escapes me. Well, Vermeer is like, I got it, I got it, and still kicked it out anyway to cause a corner. That's the defender's fault. Was it Mark Anthony K? What know. the uh, fuck? Yeah, the way they're looking at him right now, yeah. Uh, Definitely his fault. You should not have cleared that ball when he had it. Are you sure that was K? I don't think that don't was Mark Anthony They had the camera on him. I don't know. That, that was, was big thing. Yeah, that was K. This is good podcasting. Yeah. Well, Damn. For Sorry, the people I just listening, 
before <laughs> watching, Mark Anthony K just completely missed the clearance on the line, and now it's tied up in the uh, CONCACAF Champions League final. So uh, let's move That's forward. That's unfortunate. Let's oh, but it doesn't forward. matter. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I just I'm not gonna do that. Anymore. <laughs> so, go T Grace. Vamos Tigres, right? <laughs> oh god. Don't you say that. Of an asshole. Sam's <laughs> thinking a lot of enemies. Don't you say that. Don't you say not that. that big of an asshole. <laughs> so let's talk uh Utah Royals, or I guess the club formerly known as the Utah Royals. They I are wore that jersey today. They are seizing operations. Um, the new ownership group taking over for the Utah Royals is taking the club and uh, bringing them back, or bringing, I guess, a soccer club, a women's soccer club, back to uh, sporting, to not sporting Kansas City, to Kansas City. Um, Jason, when you saw this news dropping, obviously Meg Linehan was all over this news. She's unbelievable with with her she's coverage. Like the NWSL. The, like, she's the best. Refer to her for everything. Yeah, I follow Meg Linehan only to hear NW. No, I'm just kidding. She's she's awesome. Um, but this move is insane. This move is crazy. That you know, I guess a club that failed in the city is now getting a, a second shot. Moved and then yeah, it's like moving back. It's weird. Uh, obviously like the old ownership was horrible. Um, so like they needed new ownership and if this is, I don't know, maybe they can build hype again, but when they went to Utah, they gained Kristen press. They had Becky Sarbra and they had Kelly O'Hara. Like all three of those players are gone. Yep. So they're basically like, we could talk about this point too. the Washington spirit acquiring Kelly O'Hara. Like, that's another thing. She's gone. She probably saw, you know, this happening and wanted out. Kristen Press, 100% not coming back um, because of this, basically. And then, like, I just – it's it's really interesting to me because they're going back to Kansas City, and I'm really curious to see because I think they're going to need a big name. They're going to need somebody who's going to get people to come to those games, and I don't know who that will be at least at this point, but they, they it's, just it's signed like an Argentinian playmaker. Yeah. She she's good. She is good. Yeah. But is she going to get us no. fans to go? She'll get women's soccer fans. She won't get American fans. Yeah. Unfortunately, they need, that's, they need that's like your, yeah, they need like your general soccer fan to be yeah. like, Oh, I want to go to this game to see yeah. Alex Morgan or something. Yep. So I, I don't know how it'll work. I hope it succeeds. Um, or if they're just like really good, they can get people to come. I mean, yes, that's, that's also so maybe uh, you know, like that signing is a good signing. So I just I I feel like when and obviously look, I wasn't a fan of soccer in general at this point, but when you know NWL was originally in Kansas City. Sporting Kansas City wasn't like as good as they were and didn't have the buzz around them and the hype around them and this, you know, yeah. the fans, you know, that they had. And I really feel like Kansas City has now turned into a soccer city between, you know, SKC, um, for, the artist formerly known as Swole Park Rangers, and, you know, now, now, <laughs> I miss Swole Park Rangers, <laughs> NWSL coming back to Kansas City. I really feel like this could be successful. And I think with any type of expansion, whether or I guess I guess this is considered expansion, but yeah, um, a relocation. Whether you're talking MLS, NWSL, USL, I don't care what it is. I feel like if you really want to show the fan base and you really want to show kind of the rest of the league that you're serious, you do have to go out and get a player. You do have to go out and get a name that people recognize and and want to get the jersey of and want to see play mm -hmm. every single week, right? And yeah. you know, thankfully, there's a lot of very good. U.S. women's national team players and a lot of U.S. women's national team players that can draw some names. I'm not sure what they are at this point, but it's a bummer that there's a shitload on Portland and like, Washington. <laughs> at this point, Go but. get one of those. It's simple. <laughs> as that, but no, so I mean, look when when we see some more, I guess names start getting connected with um, Kansas City and everything like that, we'll talk about it. But I'm excited for it. I really feel like this could be big, uh, big for the city of Kansas City and big. Well, for yeah, you're right though. Like this could potentially all these fans in Kansas city that are just fans of soccer could just want to go and support it. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah, who knows? Well, there is also the rumors that, uh, Olympic Lyon rain are also relocating as well. Those I haven't fake. heard much about this. Is this, like, I haven't heard this was, this is like Tony Parker saying like, Hey, 
because he owns like three percent because it, it's owned by like the Leon group. Like oh well, yeah, yeah. Um, and Tony Parker owns like three percent of it. And he's like, it'd be cool to have an NFL team in Miami or something. And people were like, oh my god, they're moving. <laughs> but See, yeah, I, I this is why we had Jason. I felt for the clickbait. Thank you, Jason. Like, <laughs> it's I'm Tony gonna... Parker. Like, hey, we could go down and hang out with Beckham. It's essentially. I'm deleting that from the memory. Memory is gone. OL Rain is saying OL Rain. Got it. I will say it, it, it's a shame though. Like Utah's last like stand was um, hosting the Challenge Cup. Their fans never got to say like like have that last home game yet. They knew it was it. Like that's yeah. just yeah. It, as a they fan of, of the sport. Like yeah, you didn't know. Like that's a shame. Yeah, that's like, it. That yeah, really that's awesome. wait for it to go. So RIP the Utah Royals. RIP joining. That's- Joining St. Louis FC this year in clubs that are going up to the sky, you know. That's it. <laughs> um, Jason, last kind of last little cleanup I want to talk about with um, NWSL, and that's Racing Louisville making some initial signings um, all through the expansion draft. Not all through the expansion draft. Most coming through the expansion draft. You want to talk about one or two players that they've kind of gone with so far that you really kind of like as initial roster moves? Yeah, I mean, I I like Jennifer Cujo. Um, she's a really high quality player, and Milliate, uh, Lauren Milliate, is really good. What's interesting to me on this list is like Alana Kennedy is on here, uh, Caitlin Ford, both really really great uh, NWSL players, but Alana Kennedy, I believe, is at Tottenham right now. And Caitlin Ford's mm-hmm. at Arsenal. So, and then obviously you have the Kristen Press and Tobin Heath on here. Yeah. Four really, you know, pretty big names. Ford and Kennedy play for Australia. So, a pretty solid national team. Really are consistent in that 11. Um, so, I mean, if they have those, I mean, I don't think Press and Heath are coming, but if Alana Kennedy and Caitlin Ford come back, like they suddenly have a pretty solid base. Um, but overall, like, I, I think they did a pretty good job. Like they need, I think another player that's going to give them that name as well. Like we were just talking about with Kansas city, but overall pretty underrated draft. I think what they did, they managed to put together. But imagine Louisville get lucky Kennedy Ford, Heath and press all decide to come back to NWSL. Then they're like a, that's top know. tier team. Top <laughs> tier, yeah. I mean, there's, there's what nine teams. So, do you uh, think they're just like banking on like Tobin Heath or Kristen Press, just kind of like going, you know what, England was a thing, but like I want to still play in America. Do you think they're banking on that? Because that has I to think be. They there. know like they're not coming. And do you think it it could also be like a now we have their rights thing? We'll make it is almost a hundred percent. Like now their we rights. have their rights, and if they want to go anywhere else and come back, it's true. like. They have to work with us. What's up, Angel so, City? Yeah, it's like if they want to go there, then Angel City got to pay up or some shit. So. Business wise, it's smart. Like at the end of the day, like it is smart because they were unprotected. Like obviously, yeah, they were unprotected for a reason. Portland probably yes. didn't think they were coming back either. Uh, Tobin oh. was coming back, and obviously Utah relocated. Press was never going back to that. Uh, no. <laughs> like especially with like Kristen Press uh, was supposed to go to Houston from. Chicago in a trade and she was just like, nah, I'm going to Sweden. And then she was traded to Utah and that's what happened. Yeah. I mean, I it's, it's, so I mean that these bigger name U S women's players can kind of dictate what they want. So they can do whatever they want, which 100%. is it's cool. A hundred percent. And I think if there is a small chance that they do want to come and play back in the States and under NWSL, then Louisville got a steal. And obviously you're not going to pass up on Tobin Heath and Kristen press. Yeah. If they do well, want- like the rounds they got them in. It was like the 14th and 15th round or something like you yeah. Yeah. might as I well think, take them at that point. I think the writing's on the wall with that. Like, and like we've been talking about, and like you said, Jason, if they decide to come back, then you know what? You have to pay us to, to get yeah. them. I think it was assumed sure. that Louisville was going to take them. And it was assumed that they weren't going to come. Yeah. No, hundred like, percent. Like both parties knew what was going to happen. A hundred percent. 
Um, okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's, let's move on to, I guess, the other leagues in America. And I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, I'm not going to kind of go down the USL route that I normally go down whenever I start talking about it. But I do just want to mention that there is a new team joining the, uh, the US Soccer Verse. And uh, there's a new expansion team starting in 2022 under USL League One. That is Central Valley Fuego FC. Mainly just wanted to talk about it because that's a fire name. But um, yeah, so they I mean, are literally name. That's a fire name. name. They're going to be fire doing... because Fuego. Oh, I didn't even realize I did that. Jason, very good. <laughs> that's why I'm here. But they're going to be joining um, League One in 2022. They're going to be joining with Fort Wayne FC, which, if you guys don't remember, is Demarcus Beasley's um, club that is going to be joining in 2023. So um, Fuego, what is it? Central Valley Fuego FC is joining 2022. Fort Wayne FC 2023. So USL League One is expanding a little bit. Yay, more teams. (laughs) So let's finish up. We'll talk a little bit about some U.S. soccer news and we'll wrap things up for the night. Um, this one we've talked about a little bit already, some of the players that we're, I'm about to mention, but Tobin Heath and Megan Rapino named to the FIFA World 11 for 2020. Um, again, like we said before, Megan Rapino doesn't really play club soccer. <laughs> so don't really know that. But Tobin Heath has been absolutely fantastic and, and deserves Tobin Heath is always fantastic. Like, is there <laughs> yeah. ever a game where you're like, oh, Tobin Heath is playing? Oh, that was a boring game. No, <laughs> it never happens. If she's in I the mean, game, it's going to be interesting and she's going to do something saucy. I saucy. mean, th- I'm going to leave it at that. That's, that's <laughs> it. Oh, you motherfucker. That, you fucking, I hate Pierre Gignac. Mo- <laughs> I hate the, the French. Wow. Wow. Wait, what wow. happened? Did they score? No. No, he missed, but it was close <laughs> and he ate some. <laughs> I'm so far behind. Oh. Jason, isn't there like a live button you can like click so that you know? Because Fox hates. Oh, fun. God, you're right. That is, there is no live button. Jesus Fox God. Sports is like the worst streaming. No, TNT is way worse. But Fox TNT is pretty bad. bad very close to being bad like it's just so bad i don't know what i'm doing half the time and there's like two fox sports streaming apps wait have you still not gotten to the goal yet oh shit fuck you know what's bad you know what's bad is that geniac literally left a good team in europe so he could go play in mexico mls teams trying to play in cocky cap champions league that's what's bad this is painful i hate this i hate this my heart's broken fucking moving forward Going on the route of positive U.S. Women's National Team players, Sam Lewis was named the 2020, I guess it's not, I have it listed wrong. Um, she was the 2020 uh, U.S. Soccer Women's Player of the Year. The top three voting came out in Sam Lewis, uh, Crystal Dunn, and Lindsay Horan. Um, I think well-deserved. Sam Lewis has been killing it with Man City, killed it on um, the international stage as well. I think no complaints there. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else you guys would throw in that top three? Christy Mewis. I mean, she did win titles. <laughs> International. Sure wow. yeah. She's, she's looking really good. Yeah. She's, I mean, I forget. She's the older Mewis, and I always forget that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, oh, now Liga Mackey's players are going to start rolling around because it's the 85th minute. Fucking. Weston Turn it Mc- off, Tom. Make, make friends. Why don't you, Tom? Oh, my God. Yeah, he's just sitting in the box on the ground. (laughs) Is he still down on your screens? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. How long does he sit down for? He's going to roll for 20 minutes, man. That's it. (laughs) And then we're going to get three minutes of added time. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The 2020 uh, U.S. Soccer Men's Player of the Year was also announced in Weston McKenney. The top three came out, Weston McKenney, Christian Pulisic, and Serginho Dest. Um, Again, I don't really have too many complaints there. I think Weston was an absolute leader uh, internationally. And then at the club level, you know, making the move from Schalke to Juve. And, you know, I think, Jason, like you said before, being now a solidified starter at Juve, or at least a solidified member of the 18. uh, We're always in the Champions League. Yeah. Fucking golosos. Um, Yeah. So... 
both U.S. and women's national team and men's national team finished up with pretty strong performances on the field. The women's national team finished up with a strong 2 nothing win over the Dutch in a repeat of the World Cup final. Rose Lavelle again scoring against the Netherlands. And, you know, maybe Man City wants to watch that game too. I don't know. Oh, no. I think they should, honestly. Like, what are they doing? We also had Christy Mewis scoring in her return to the national team. So there's your shout from before too. Honestly, the ladies just killing it in 2020 with that with that strong finish there. Another year of them killing it. Yeah. Another, another year. But the US men's national team had a pretty strong finish too. It was against maybe like a B team El Salvador side but still a strong finish they won six nothing um a lot of debuts a lot of solid performances a lot of u.s men's national team veterans getting back on the field and paul Ariola, happy for him to get back into the u.s mnt picture sebastian legette scoring uh we saw debuts from mueller and akinola they uh both scored uh mueller got a brace i think as well aronson scored and not his debut but you know one of his first few caps uh, it was just all around great performance. Um, you know, obviously the first half finished, what was it, five nothing, and then they scored one in the second half, whatever it was. But just an honestly strong performance from both sides to really just close out what a shitty year 2020 has been. Yeah, really fun. Really yeah, fun, fun games, game. honestly. Like, I couldn't have been happier. <laughs> No, and I don't want to dive too much into it because, like, you know, that happened so long ago now at this point. But well, and did you see uh, Rania got uh, – Young, young player of the year. US yes, player yes. of the year. I mean, again, starter at uh, Dortmund, and, and I feel like he could have been up for just player of the year for after his I, year. I could have sworn he was. No, he, I'm sure he was up for it, but that was just yeah, you know, he wasn't top three. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, cool. Okay. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to talk about before I give a little goodbye to 2020? This is obviously, I said it to start the pod, um, but this is the last episode of the MLS Aces podcast for the year. You will hear us year in, end review. in 2021. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Jason, anything you want to say while we uh, end the year? Um, honestly, like I'm, I'm ready for 2021. Honestly, like I hope it just, Hopefully we can go back to normal. Hopefully I can attend some fire games. Yeah. Season ticket holder and actually go to the games. Yeah. yeah I'm glad I got to hold the season tickets. But and you got a ball from Bobby Shuttle. Yeah, ball. Yeah. I got the ball and then I got a the shuttle jersey. ball. I actually got this jersey for like ten dollars. Nice. That's impressive. I, they have like a season ticket event back in like before COVID BC. Um <laughs> And I and all the shit was discounted, so I got like sweatpants, multiple pairs of shorts, this jersey nice. for like twenty bucks. Wow! It was like three pairs of what shorts for five dollars or something. That's nice. Wow! It was really nice. I'm impressed. I really hope they do that again. No <laughs> fire. I only wear Chicago Fire clothes. This but between the shit I bought and then the like my club team is with like the fire organization so every season we get a different t-shirt and i'm like oh god it's just all chicago fire t-shirts are you a future homegrown for the chicago fire i mean i'm 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 25 so. <laughs> you, technically you could still be homegrown you haven't broken into the first team yet yeah you're just an older homegrown that's it yeah, people don't know that but i'm training with them behind closed doors yeah. He gets his jerseys from them. <laughs> How do you think I knew about Georgie? Yeah. Got yeah. me on that. Yeah. All right, Sam, anything you want to say to close out uh, the pod and 2020, I guess? Uh, it's, no, it's, it's been a hell of a year. Cheers to everyone for making it through this. Cheers to everyone who didn't make it through it. Pour one out for them because yeah. it's been one fucking hell of a year. So Hopefully um, we could have made all of their years, all of everyone's years better just a little yes. bit <laughs> yeah we do we do what we can here at mls so, so cheers to you guys we'll see you next year thanks for listening to all of us seriously because oh my god we're nuts. yeah we spew a bunch of random shit most of the time anyway. yeah <laughs> but we do it in an entertaining way and that's why that's we're, the best. we're the best u.s soccer podcast out there i mean that's extra time get out of here <laughs> recognized show. by the league can't say no to that cool here. again Cooligans out of here. Fucking the two stupid little dickheads and blazers get out of here. No, we we don't we're, talk we're the about them. We don't, we don't talk about them. Yeah, we don't consider they, them a competition. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> really don't like them. In in all sincerity, um, I want to thank everyone. It's been a crazy year. 
on the field for, for soccer. We saw some random competitions pop up. We saw competitions not being played. We've seen another MLS team making it to a CONCACAF Champions League final. Off the field, it's been insane with things going on in society, a presidential race, uh, a, a pandemic sweeping over the globe. Um, we didn't even know if we were going to get soccer again in 2020. And the fact that we can have that kind of as a little bit of a distraction, you know, got to thank the the organizations, the players for kind of doing their thing and, and getting that out there because, you know, they're offering a lot to us fans who, you know, we just want to watch a game. They're kind of risking their lives, you know, training and going out every day and doing things the right way. So a thank you to them as well. And to everyone who listens to this, who now watches this because we are on Twitch and on YouTube and everything like that. Thank you guys. Uh, you know, the three of us, we took a little bit of a hiatus this year too, just because 2020 has been insane, but we appreciate you guys kind of just coming back, rocking with us, rolling with it. And um, hopefully 2021 calms down. Hopefully we can get back to seeing games in person and, you know, we can get back to really just kind of a normal schedule a little bit and, you know, everything like that. And hopefully we just get more fun U.S. soccer in 2021 and hopefully LAFC can fucking score an equalizer in the next 15 <laughs> seconds. But to end I things- told you three seconds of extra time. I told you. <laughs> you guys are almost done with it? Oh, man. To end the year, right, guys, thank you to the listeners. Jason, Sam, thank you to you guys. And um, we'll see everyone again in 2021. Thank you. Cheers.